Now, you know how I like to talk about colour palette. So I am going to visit the lovely Caroline Redpath, who is an extraordinary florist. She uh, does all the really big, smart weddings around here. Uh, what I would call a full Fragonard look. And I quite often supply her with flowers to go in her enormous installations so my flowers are never the only flowers she has she always sources from three four sometimes up to six or seven different flower growers so that she can have this extraordinary explosion of flowers for her clients it's a fantastic very very specialist job so um i thought you might be really interested we go over and have a chat um she and i are good colleagues we've um we understand each other, we admire each other's work and we understand how much work goes into each other's efforts and uh, it's a very nice relationship. Um, but as you know, I like to think about what I wear to such occasions. If I'm filming with Caroline, I won't want to clash. So despite the fact it's a horrible grey day and very miserable out there and I thought well, I might wear to cheer myself up bright red, a bright red jumper. But actually, I think that would not go A, with her very tasteful and beautiful house. Um, but B, her, she tends to wear kind of, um, she quite often wears a sort of lichen green or a charcoal or she wears natural stone or earth or plant colours but really quite natural colours so as usual I don't have that many really natural but I'm wearing my green jumper that you've all seen a lot of this winter from Eribe and uh, just jeans and a, and a shirt but because I'm going to be filming and probably filming both of us talking to each other if I wear bright red <laughs> and she's wearing a muted pink won't work Chew, I beg your pardon. Um, anyway, I've done my weekly hair wash, I've had my weekly bath, and uh, off we go. So let's go and see how a luxury wedding florist here in sunny Somerset, or not very sunny today, um, works with a flower farmer like me. Off we go. And yes, this is my bedroom. <laughs> a quilt made by my mum, Googie. My name, embroidered by my grandmother, for a christening present. A picture by my friend Anne, who's a very talented artist who lives in the next, the next lane. Memories of travels in my youth. That's Petra. And the books up here breed when I'm not looking. I come back and there are more and more and more of them. This is why when you say, please film your house, I don't, because the books are just overwhelming. Though I do love them, I love them. I would not be without them. They're my favorite and my best thing. And if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks are useful along the way, you can always buy me a coffee or better still join my club. The links to club membership and coffee buying are in the blurbs to all my clips. And do make a comment. I answer all my comments on YouTube because YouTube makes it so easy for me to find them. <laughs> and you always put interesting, you always have interesting things to say. So thanks very much. Enjoy the clip and do subscribe. Right, I'm off to Caroline's and I'm taking these lovely purple and white striped tulips, which are called striped flag. So here we are. When you see this van on the road, you know there's very high quality flowers on the move. And here we are at Caroline's beautiful house. Look at this clever wall. And you can see from the beautiful garden how carefully everything has been done what an attention to detail caroline has 
isn't this a little oasis of calm on a miserable, miserable day? Beautiful birds, beautifully laid out. Everything's immaculate. Attention to detail everywhere. Let's go and say hello. Caroline says that weeding is her zen time. She goes out and you can see the beds are immaculate. So she keeps herself calm with the weeding. Lovely dark red hellebore in a pot. Isn't that pretty? That would make a lovely detail. <gasps> well, hello, Caroline. <laughs> well, you're admiring that one, but the pheasant's got that one. Oh, look, yes, the pheasant got this one. It's normal. Hello, Caroline. <laughs> look at your beautiful house. Thank you. Oh, look. And this was the dairy man's cottage. It's very beautiful. Oh, it's a haven. Look, real mint tea. And this is Teddy, who is very friendly and says hello. So Caroline, it's lovely. Thank you very much for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into floristry? Sure. So, um, always loved the outside life. Used to have horses when I was younger. Um, really young that is. <laughs> um, then sort of got into marketing, sales, all that kind of thing. Indoor life, didn't like it. And I thought, I want to be outside. I want to be a garden designer. So studied that, did a few gardens, um, actually didn't really make that much money of it because it's all that sort of conceptual design that you're selling and people want patios actually that's what the, so not so always did lots of friends weddings um had a big big ornamental garden not this one and then was um did um charity event for a school same school as you work for yourself and a marquee company came along and said oh do you want to be on our suppliers list and that's basically how it started and that was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, you've been a florist for 20 years. Doing all sorts. So now, I mean, for the past five, year, five years, probably longer, only weddings and events, but I've had to get everything. Had to get postal flowers very early on. Wasn't great, I can tell you. Uh, oh, just about everything. Farm shops, did loads of contract work, funerals, everything. You name it, I've done it, really. That's fantastic. And how, and so your business has evolved and now mm. you and I work together quite often with your doing the big events that I've stepped back from a bit yeah. because you are an amazing florist. Oh, you have an incredible you. eye. That's, that's very kind of you. You do what I call the full fragonard. <laughs> <laughs> so when somebody comes to you, you do maybe 15, 20 events a year. How do yes. you work your year out? So um, we certainly limit the numbers because each event takes so long and um, it's as much mental strain upon yourself to do an event that's worth £1,000 as it is to do an event that's worth £20,000. The care, the attention to detail is exactly the same the stress is the same and so um, you know looking to do the bigger events which we can artistically enjoy and I have lots of freelancers who this is how they make their money so I like to keep them employed as well. So. It's fantastic you've got this lovely pile of paper and I'd love mm. you to show us a bit how you work out so if I'm the customer yeah i come to you and i say i'm going to have my wedding i've invited 200 people we're going to have a big dinner there's a church wedding and i've got eight bridesmaids 10 buttonholes and i want a really fantastic explosion of flowers then what do you do okay so a little step back from that um you as a client come to me 
um, we would have an in-depth discussion. I create a framework on a proposal of what I think the design that you want it to be. Um, I also probably will ask you how much you want to spend. Client often doesn't know, they're hopeful about what they would like to spend. So uh, from that initial interview, I create a proposal so at the bottom, they can look at the bottom line and say, oh, hmm, that's going to cost X. And then we, we would have follow up consultations and then it becomes a collaborative journey and we work through what they want. At that point, once I've established what they want colour wise and we've agreed on the number of items, um, not typed out like this is, but this is this is my next six jobs here. Um, I write, starting with colour, I start writing a list of the flowers out that I think I'm likely to use on any given date in the year. And I've done enough, I grow enough that I can pretty much know seasonally what is going to be available. So when I start in the spring, I know that you know, one of my top flowers will be ranunculus, which will be supplied by yourself. Um, and as I move on, I know when the roses come in and so on. But I do work all year round. And the numbers are huge, aren't they? I mean, can mm. we have a look at this lovely table centre as an example? Yes. So this, this, um, this is a, a fairly standard um, vessel that I would use on a trestle table. So we're thinking three foot trestle table um, for 200 people that generates 34 trestles. Each trestle will have something like um, two or perhaps a slightly greater ratio, something like one and a half of these per trestle. Okay, so for 200 people, that's 45 of these. 45 table centres and they Correct. all have to look not identical, but have the same weight, the same number of stems, the same, same composition, feel. Composition, same. Yes. So, um, so obviously, if we're doing forty-five of these, a bucket is not going to work. One bucket no. of mixed flowers isn't going to work. So, from that, so I know, I don't need to work it out for nearly everything I do. I know what each item number of stems is going to be required and from that for a design like this and so this will be a design going long ways so although this is round because we wanted to go long down the table and not intrude on the front i know exactly how many flowers how much foliage needs to go in it and those flowers are comprised of what i call fat flowers but they'd be focal flowers so big fat peony big fat roses fat ranunculus, vocal flowers, floaty flowers coming out the top, um, flowers like jasmine coming out the sides um, to lengthen the design, some foliage in the bottom, other elements. So, and we might have gesture vases in between, but I know without looking, I know exactly how many flowers you need for each vessel, vase, etc. And what's amazing is also, if you think you're making 45 of those table centres and say you're also doing a nine metre circle above the bar yeah. and a big arch at the at the church and a couple of huge pedestals and pew ends all the way down. And meadows. And all of that. Yeah. So for a big job like that, how many people would you have working on it? Um, each job is different, um, but... A vessel like that, and you can start to calculate the hours, is going to take an experienced florist about 45 minutes per vessel. But that is with the bucket handed over to them with the correct number of stems, foliage, so they're not going backwards yeah. and forwards. They're giving it to them ready to go because they're very skilled and um, breaking it all down and walking, that doesn't work. It's a waste of their valuable time. It's a waste of their time. So if so, when we work together, mm. you will order from four or five different, even more different suppliers. 
because you are very eco and you're very conscious of where the flowers come from and you try and get as many not in not exclusively but as many locally grown flowers as you can i try so yeah. you typically you'll ring me say the event is on a saturday you'll ring me a week and a half two weeks before and you'll say can i pop over and come and see you yeah. and walk around the field on say the monday yeah then how does the rest of the week go well um so before we get to that before i come <laughs> jumped ahead of you before i get to that i compose so i know what i'm doing i compose a list of everything that's going to go into that event so everything is calculated up because you cannot guess at these numbers that they're just way too big so i write my wish list on here of what i want to get um and with the seasons changing obviously you know at the end of may we could be well into summer already as we were last year so you have to tweak it a little bit all the time be very very flexible so i calculate what i need on here and i um i'm looking when i come to a flower farmer like yourself georgie i'm looking for the really beautiful um gardeny type flowers that are going to be really close to people so for me the table centers the, the buttonholes the bouquets they're the ones that need the special attention they're the ones that need the scented foliage the herbs the, the really special flowers no use sticking the special stuff in in the arch it's it has to match with everything else but you don't need it maybe a bunch of geranium at head height so you you smell that as you yeah. go in but you've got to all the special gardeny stuff has to go in the things that people are really close to and that's when you come to me i know mm. when you come to me you are looking for the detail exactly so yes. last summer we had that unexpected I had a, a self-sown crop of bright red sweet peas. Yes, yeah, so they did it all by themselves and they tied themselves in. They did the whole bit. They did. And yeah. you came along and you went, oh, fantastic. I've got a bit. You had a pink red. It was dark reds. It was really rich, jewel-coloured event. Yeah. I had two, actually. Yeah, did and you had loads twice. of those red sweet peas. Yes, all of them, I think, yeah. To go in those, exactly those table centres. Yeah, so they, yes, it was bright pinks, um, yeah, I couldn't tell you when it was. I can see it, but I can't tell you what month it's the it was same. now. It's the same. Yeah. I so, remember it, but I couldn't tell you when. <laughs> no, no. Tur on the website, it's on turquoise tablecloths. Yeah. So it looked really vibrant. It was really yeah. stunning. Yeah. So if you come to me on the month, so you've got your great big long list. Yeah. You will come and see me for maybe detail and roses, yeah. for example. You might yeah. go to Black Shed for some other things that you know that they're going to have. You yeah. might go to another girl who's growing specialist dahlias, whatever. Yeah. So you might have to then, as well as ordering from, say, the Real Flower Company, yeah. you might then be making three site visits to flower farmers on the Monday. Well, probably not, because on my wish list, in my head, I already have a vision of what is going to be available and you and I will have already spoken earlier in the year and I'm going to say to you okay second week of June we've got a peach wedding what can you do for me and you'll look on your list and you'll say blah 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 yeah. blah sorry I can't think of any yes, no, <laughs> nothing at all um, and they will go on my list and on that list it will have real flower company Common Farm, Black Shed. I've also got a freelancer, Love at the Farm. So she also grows stuff for me. So she'll say, okay, my Covent Garden jip is perfect at the moment. I've also got Mallow or I've got this or I've got that. And they will go into my sort of mix of last minute things that I'll add to make these, everything look really unique and very special. Um, but then I've got my hardcore flowers that, depending what the season is, so if it's ranunculus, that's an easy one. If it's dahlias, it's an easy one. 
June, you know that there's plentiful supply of roses, so that's easy, but then it's the other ends of the year, it gets harder, and then it's Dutch. Yeah. predominantly Dutch so well that's fair enough you know you you know your market and you've got to work with you've got to work with your market and I think as flower farmers we've got to understand the sheer quantity that you need for a mm. big event yeah I mean I think I've got I've got a seven acre patch with three acres of cut flowers and I don't even touch the sides no. of what you need no uh, it is massive so once once um the wish list is written once the recipe for every single item is written it then goes onto a spreadsheet so i'm only part way through these spreadsheets so i prefer when i'm visualizing to run a proper list it actually starts in a book to start with then i type it up because then i can keep changing my mind and making little additions and so you know i can also look back on past jobs at the same time of year and I look back and I see what I've bought so I know what's good so you so blossom time for example is very difficult because warm spring blossoms all gone cold spring doesn't it's not even in bud let alone flower I mean I bought blossom before and it was good six weeks later yeah so difficult very difficult so then it goes goes on a spreadsheet and you can see here we're talking nearly 500 roses here 300 roses 124 roses yes. and the numbers start to build up that's i remember that when we were talking about urage manor well we did yeah. you did the most beautiful event there and years ago i did one event at urage and i remember we had 500 roses yeah from a company in suffolk that no longer functions now yeah so, so, so a shame and um, I love roses because apart from the myriad of colours, the scent, they are reliable. Yes. They're easy. They're, um, you know, the, the more you get into this game, experience tells you, you have spring flowers on, on a, say, a south facing um, wall or your arch you're making. I mean, I love foxgloves. They don't like it. It's too hard for it's them. It's too hot. Peonies, yeah. very tricky. <laughs> and you know, like the, the you know the coloured ones also start to they they get wilty as yes. well. Like they get it's not blowing. They also start to go. It's too hot. I'm too hot. Yeah. Yeah. It's really really hard. So your your wedding week, you will be ordering up your detail from people like me. Yeah. On the month, uh, the, say the. Thursday or Friday or mon even the Monday of that week. And then how does the week go? If you've got, say you've got an event for 200 people on the Saturday and mm. it's within an hour's drive. So um, on the Wednesday, um, it could be at the workshop or it actually might be at the venue. It actually depends. If it's a private house, we might do it on site. Every job is different. On a Wednesday... Uh, we start getting the flowers in for processing. If it's really, really hot weather, we might say Thursday. Um, you've got to try and gauge it. You've got to look at the weather the week before. So the bulk of the flowers come in and then that piece of paper, the wretched piece of paper, this actually also serves as the recipe list. So everything is stripped. Um, it's bunched back up into tens because if you've got a thousand roses, we they can't be loose in the bucket. We've got to keep them in tens so we can go ten there, twenty there, fifty there, and be really quick about it. it takes too long otherwise. Yeah. Time is of the essence. So Wednesday is processing and sorting, or it could be the Thursday. Um, Wednesday is also the day that you find out that the 500 sweet peas you ordered ain't coming. <laughs> but 50 are. So where do you find the other 450? So you might then say, OK, let's do scabious, because often we're using sweet peas as a floaty kind of flower. So, I mean, nothing is like a sweet pea. You can't replicate that. But we might look for alternatives. So all you flower farmers out there, um, tell, tell us as soon as you think you can't do it. 
because we then we've got time to try and do something about it. That's what I like about working with you is that you understand that my garden, if it's hot weather, yeah, it's things that in one in normal weather would last a week or ten days. Mm. If we're having a thirty degree Celsius, not Fahrenheit, yeah, week. Mm. Then my sweet peas will blow. My ammy's yeah. gone. My yeah. and there's nothing I can do about no. it. But you're brilliant because you say to me, "I'd rather know. I'd yeah. rather know because then I can sort it out." So I'm not trying to supply you with rubbish. No. And you're not trying to work with rubbish. No. I mean it. Uh, no. So we've got to. If something's going awry, we need to know about it, ASAP because yeah. there's still time. I mean, sweet peas. I love them, but. Boy, they are difficult because really, um, I really only want the sweet peas picked the day before. They're picked on, they uh, only last really two days tops. And quite often these big weddings, more often than not, they have an event on the Sunday as well. So they have a brunch. So I don't want to be going along pulling everything out. So, uh, So flowers start coming in. Um, we then sort them all out into individual buckets. So those 45 vessels, they go in 45 buckets. We then have, have um, do it by colours. So we have sticky tape and the recipe will be printed out big and I'll have a big piece of red sticky tape at the bottom. So that is indicating that sticky tape goes with that vessel. Yeah. So that's the only way you can do it. So they're then put together over the Thursday, Friday. Friday will be on site most likely. And we might put, um, so if we're using trees, for example, living trees. So uh, for more sustainability, we keep a lot of trees here, shrubs, ivies. Um, I, I mean, I grow things like ami in little plastic pots so I can pop into things. Um, that kind of thing, so it's not for cutting. I remember being really impressed when we first spoke, and you said, "Oh, I've got, I've got cosmos in pots," and I just pick up the cosmos yeah. in the pot, and I, oh, you put it in the arrangement, and then it comes home with me, and I put it back in the garden, yeah. and then I can use it again. I can keep working with it, and that is fantastic for the for the purposes of sustainability. It's not easy keeping cosmos looking that mm. good week after week so it's not a it's not a free lunch but it is brilliant for sustainability well um things like cosmos and ami uh, um i'm not sure how but probably a litre square pot dropping those into a planter so i've got a big planter i've got a tree in it but i want to look but it's got a meadow or something growing out of the bottom of it if i can put a few ami cosmos uh Pesicaria is something I use frequently because so I get little tiny bits of it. Always produces a few flowers. Um, have done it with borage before as well. So, so great. So it's a all these things are hard work to do, but you get a very naturalistic gardeny effect. Yeah, you do. Are you yours is. I mean, I think that's probably maybe why we work quite quite well together is because we have a similar aesthetic in the yeah. garden. If I had a garden that looked like a garden, it would look like yours. And if you took the ingredients of your garden and split them out and put them into into chunks in my flower field, it would look like mine. Yes. So we have very similar aesthetic, uh, I think. Yeah, so my gar- I produce masses of amount of foliage from my garden. I, the flowers are not... So I pick anything that I need... And, you know, little seed heads and poppy seed head. Oh, name it, I'll pick it and use it. But I don't try and produce flowers for it. It just doesn't work. It's too much hard work. And I think back in the day, I used to do a lot of big weddings. And I'm slowly stepping back and doing fewer weddings and being the grower. Because I prefer to do that end. And you are the artist that likes to work with the floristry. So it seems much more sensible. Instead of us all trying to be all things to all people. I think a florist grower is incredibly difficult, personally. I mean, uh, when we were doing the farm shops and contracts, that was okay. Basically, they all got the same in different sizes because 
I mean, if I was doing it next week, I've got masses of commissias and things. Yeah. I haven't got much else, but I've got plenty of commissias. And you, you can work from your garden like that. It's in, I find it impossible to grow it. And, and you grow it much better than me. And, and it's the same. The, the other thing is, it's the quantity as well. And um, say it's all blown the weekend before. Well, that's a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. So you do all the floristry then happens uh, either here in your workshop or in Bruton. In Bruton. Yeah. Or on site um, yeah. at the venue. Yeah. And you might be working till midnight on the Friday. We. You can do that occasionally, but you cannot. It's not fair on people have children, families, dogs, parents. Um, we try and restrict the working day because it's too much. Um, we've never worked till midnight. I have certainly started at two in the morning. Oh, so, Caroline. Oh, I know. That's, so yeah. I have certainly to get through the work, but I, I personally really can't go beyond six. I, well, I can be... It's just dreadful. Um, I don't mind getting five o'clock. I'm up all the time, but... Yeah. Do I want to get... No, working, that's way too late. Well, you and I both like to finish the day with a glass of something and yeah. just go, we've earned this, yes, I think. exactly. So, but then you have to go back on this. If there's an event on the Sunday, you have to go back, refresh the flowers, make sure they're looking great for a, the Sunday brunch, and then you have to go on the Monday correct. and clear down. So, yeah, so we're clearing down on the Monday, and some of the D-rigs take two days yeah there, it's just so much to do um so tuesday and then we're back at wednesday and we're starting again it's flat out it's isn't flat it? out and so that's why you need super organization you've got to um get all your ducks in a row all the time that's why it's all got to it's all got to go on a spreadsheet yes you know you've got to have all your candles you've got to have the tape you've got to have the ribbon You've got to have all the props. It's all got to look immaculate. It's all got to be packed into the van. And it's got to be unpacked. And then you've got to pack it back in. It's got to go through the washing machine, etc., etc. It's a lot. And do you does everything fit in that van? Or do you sometimes need two or three? Um, no. So I've got the baby van that nobody wants to go in. <laughs> so I have to drive the baby van. Um, so I've got a... Another, a Ford Transit, oh, I don't know what it's a long Ford Transit yeah. thingy. So um, sometimes we have to do several trips. Try not to hire. Um, the reason I actually had to buy vehicles is it's not practical hiring. Uh, but we've got to either go to Yeovil, which is 25 minutes. We've got to park the car. Um, the Four days hire, five days hire. Economically, it's, it's not worth so it. much money. So isn't that's it? a huge investment, um, but um, it pays for itself. Yeah. yeah quite quickly. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, occasionally we do have to do extra, but I I've, I've got someone who does um, who takes care of the props actually, um, because that's a job in itself. And she will go backwards and forwards in the van. So she doesn't do floristry. She does the I fetching mean, and carrying. Yeah. When, you know, push comes to shove, she might have to be tying aerial stuff in or whatever. But basically, she's just go for it. Yeah. Because... You need a runner. It's like yeah, a runner. runner. Yeah. 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 So that's what she does. And yeah, it's non-stop. Well, you see why I'm coming. I'm going to come into the picture, everybody. Um... Now, I hope, uh, this is such an interesting discussion because I hope that you can all see why wedding flowers cannot be inexpensive. No. Uh, I mean, the, the whole price thing is, it's a huge subject. And, and you and I talk about it sometimes, but every single stem is handled so many times yeah. by me or my staff. That's before you even get into how many times it's been handled by you exactly. to get to that point. I mean, it is an expensive commodity. There's well, and no it's also, I think, it. we have to consider, we're not just considering your skill as a florist or um, the fact that you've got eight or nine people helping you do the job over two or three or 
four or five days even. Well, five days, really. It's a five-day job. And then for two or three days before that, I'm out there cutting, conditioning, hoping the weather's okay, potentially even shading something out to keep it, yeah. to keep it for those few days. I'm having to collect, to cut and condition. Then we have this very efficient system where I put everything in the front porch of my house and Caroline, either Caroline herself or somebody else will come along and we bucket swap. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because we use the same kinds of buckets. So I'll say, I've got nine buckets in the porch for you and Caroline will appear or somebody will come and appear, appear, take the nine buckets and leave nine buckets so that we're not endlessly buying new buckets. There's a very little waste. You never use floral foam. Your floristry is always in water, yeah, always. completely sustainable. So it's completely compostable. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, compared to, you know, even when I started out, which was 15 years ago, that's, I've used as much floral foam as the next person. You know, I, that's what I thought, I, that was normal. That's what we did. And so there's been such a sea change and you were really a leader in that. I remember your your Instagram really quite a long time ago going, we don't use floral foam, we just use vases and water. Yeah, and actually, for anyone that's still using floral foam, just give it, don't give the floral foam a go, just tr- try arranging. I mean, arranging flowers is an absolute joy. Yeah. And um, you get a much freer, much looser, much quirky, quirkier look, I think, um, just using water chicken wire or i mean these so um these ones we use pillows you know what i mean by the pillows um the, we've used the same pillows for five years they they don't even get dirty they're brilliant and, they, um, and also you can get a very good slant on them which so if you want to have things so they're not all going up um they work that way we do use frogs as well pin cushions for more delicate vases and um, that we want it to be a bit more invisible. I don't bother with the cross hatch of sellotape, I can never get it to stick. It works. Well, if each of those goes in its own box, it's protected yeah. on its journey. Yeah. And then of course you do what everybody does. If you'll get you'll get there, you'll put the things out and then you'll think, yes. oh well I'll just pudge it. Yes. <laughs> I haven't heard the expression. We have said we always say a cross between bodging and putting. It's well, it's when you've finished it, but you put it in place and just because the light falls on it in a certain way, or you know, it might just need another stem here, or take something out and pop it in that, you know, it looks as though there's a hole, or there's, you know, you just pudge it. It's a little pudging. So with the more transparent flowers that we might be using, and the floaty flowers, um, we might we often leave those to the very. We don't even put them in. The same thing when we create aisles, meadows for churches, we don't put the delphiniums or foxgloves in. They don't make the journey. They always snap or the bit comes yeah. off the top of them. So you just so, take them with you and then just pop them in when you get so there. So the, the, the trough will be completely ready to go bar for the foxgloves or the delphiniums, although anything very upright because um, it's too vulnerable in the van. It's going to be a good year for foxgloves this year, you'll be glad to hear. I know, I've got quite a, I've got quite a few in the garden, but they're they're always, there was purple. I'm, I'm always trying to grow the peachy brown ones. Well, or... hopefully I've got peachy and white for you, so we'll yeah, be all right. that would be fantastic. So one last question, Caroline. Mm. I think this is, I th- I'm sure you'll all agree, this has been a really, really useful conversation. So how do you look after yourself? You know, this is physical hard work. Apart from too much, you and I both have a penchant for gin, but is there something that you've been doing that you've found really helps? I think um, for florists and farmers, the whole self-care thing, it's, it's a minefield because um, you start off with really good intentions, but just going through a week and you've got eight, nine back-to-back weddings, where, where are you supposed to look after the dog, the children? do the washing, um, food shop, create the food. So um, Georgia and I both have done Zoe, um, yeah, which was, a, a, actually both felt we needed a PhD, actually, <laughs> yes. food, food science. I had to come over and say to Georgia, well, what does this mean? Yeah. Um, and that has both worked really well for us. So. I have found it amazing for the energy levels. Yeah. And, and I've not been, 
I've not found, I've found it easy. And I think because you stick a button in your arm and it tells you what your body, how your body reacts to food. Yeah. And you see it on your phone for those two weeks. Yeah, you see it. I... You see it goes red. And you're like, oh, I won't eat that again. Yeah, I mean, just, uh, uh, you know, for me, I'm really struggling with um, blood sugar glucose way too high. So carrots, parsnips, who would have thought a carrot would do that to yeah. you? So, but it's all about personal. Um... And you feel much better. Oh, yeah, way better. Yeah. So I'm actually even slept a bit you know so I don't sleep yeah that's so, amazing yeah I don't sleep and it's a stress as well because um every single every you've got to reinvent the wheel every week and everything's got to be perfect for these weddings um if the wine's a bit warm well that's not great if, you know if the beef's a bit tough that's not great but if the flowers aren't good that's the end. It's a major, major thing. That's a major yeah. faux pas. And um, yeah, you've got to make it look stunning and that the couple are overwhelmed every yeah. single week. Yeah. Every week. I have that to, is stressful. I th that is the thing, is I always have a thing, if I give the bride her bouquet and she bursts into tears, I know I've done a good job. <laughs> you want her to cry in a good way. She wants to go, oh, that's the most beautiful thing I've yeah. ever seen. And then you know you're all right. The makeup artist going, get up. Oh, go. <laughs> yeah. Standing there. Yeah. It's so stressful. It's so stressful. I don't know how you did it. But um, Caroline, I cannot thank you enough. I have to say, I think that's my an pleasure. education for all of my subscribers. Thank you so much. No. And um, thank you for welcoming us to your beautiful home. We've been visiting different people's homes. We went to Rachel Ashwell. Do you know yes. Shabby Sheep? Yeah. Absolutely. So come and book. Well, we yeah. were up at her house a couple of weeks ago, and then last weekend we were at my friend Katie, and she's an artist in London, and uh, her colour palette is is strong. So Rachel's is all sort of white and cream and very pale, and Katie's are sort of quite rich greens and dark pinks oh, and gorgeous. bright blue. She's a brilliant artist. And so I'm now I'm asking people, to tell me what they think their basic palette is, but I think we can see. <laughs> it's quite, well, it's very neutral and spare. I, I think as a sort of antidote to the frenetic energy, adrenaline wedding days, I just want to be really chilled. Yeah. And so the house wasn't tidy for Georgie. It's always like this. I want it tidy. You said when I arrived, you said, this is my, this is my sanctuary. Yeah. This is where I come to walk away from all of the frantic headspace. Yeah. And yeah. just have it calm. And it is a yeah. really lovely place. Oh, thank you. Well, so thank you very much for inviting us in. And thank you. Thank you. For, it's such a brilliant chat. That's really, really great. Thanks. So um, I'm going to press stop. And thanks very much for coming along, everybody. I hope you've been as interested as I have. <laughs> here go, here go. Despite the weather, Come we on. are going to have a season. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So I'm back at Common Farm Flowers, just taking tea cake up the field for a pee, and I would really recommend that you have a look at Caroline's website. She's just relaunched her website. Look at mine. <laughs> Yes, I'm the flower farmer. She's very glamorous, smart and stylish florist. Um, but have a look at Caroline's website because it's really, really beautiful. She's just had a relaunch. Have a look at her Instagram and you'd be surprised how often you'll see my flowers in there. Um, and you'll see the quality of the work. But also after this discussion, I hope you'll understand a bit more the work that goes into those high-end floristry events. I think this has been such an interesting chat and I hope we have lots more like it. So thanks very much for visiting and I'll see you very soon.